and singing our processional, the church's one foundation. of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. It's at this time that we'd like the first graders, the first grade CCD, uh, to please go downstairs. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it he built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crops of grapes, but what he yielded was wild grapes. Now, inhabitants of Jerusalem, and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now, I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing, break through its wall, 
let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see, bloodshed, for justice, but hark, the outcry. The word of the Lord. the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God, that surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, 
whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenant to obtain his produce. But the tenant seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again he sent other servants more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to these tenants when he comes? They answered him, he will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, did you never read in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. In the Gospel today, we hear of unworthy servants who try to take possession of the master's property for their own. No one can deny just how greedy it is since they were paid well by the master and they deserve no more than what they agreed to work for. The offertory is the people's chance to be generous. It's our chance to prove to God that we are not as greedy as those bad tenants. And it's our chance to give something back to God that has been given to us. In anti-Covidian times, we would have families bring up the gifts. You know, it's something that's symbolic of the Eucharist itself and follows the same pattern. Because God gives us grain and grapes, we as humans take them and refine them into bread and wine, and then we give those back to God here at the altar in anticipation that God will give us back something even better that will be his very self in the Eucharist. There's a progression there. 
you know, just as the progression goes from the center aisle up to the foot of the sanctuary, and the priest receives the gifts and brings them into the sacred space where the sacrifice of the mass will take place. After this is done, the priest will then pour a drop of water into the wine being mixed at the offertory. Wine represents Christ's divine nature, and the water represents our human nature. You know, wine which is strong, it has a good flavor to it. Uh, and then human nature, which is more like water, compared with wine, it's weak. You know, there's not much there. But the mixing of the two signifies Christ's incarnation. But it also points to his passion when blood and water flowed from his side. The mingling of the two recalls the work of his redemption on the cross, which started with God becoming man, with that incarnation, and was completed when Christ poured out everything he had for us on, by dying and laying down his life for us. During this time, the priest will also say many prayers of preparation. He blesses the bread and wine for the specific purpose of it later becoming the Eucharist. The priest raises up the chalice towards the crucifix to show the union of the offering with Christ's same offering on the cross. Once the priest says that blessing, he has to consecrate those gifts because that blessing reserves them for God alone. Think back to the book of Exodus where there were certain oblations that you know, the, the priestly Levites would put aside for the Lord and no one could touch those. Those were for God alone. And it's the same at the mass with the bread and wine once they've been offered to our Lord. The gifts can't be used for anything else. This moment brings us back to our true place before God and it purifies us. It prepares us to enter into God and to share in his divine activities. The offertory opens up that door and it opens up that door to union with God. Since we are at mass and we are participating in Christ's sacrifice on the cross in an offering to the Father, and since we expect the bread and wine to change into the body and blood of Christ, something for you to meditate on was that just as a change is to take place in the bread and wine, a change should take place in each and every one of you. After you receive the Eucharist, you should be transformed and you should become more Christ-like than you were before. You should take what you've heard during the liturgy of the word and it should transform your minds, you know, and the Eucharist should transform your hearts to go out and then be disciples, bringing more people into the fold. The priest, after he's made this offering, will bow profoundly. You know, we as priests, we should be humbled by our own weakness and the greatness of the sacrifice that is about to be offered. You know, and he prays that the Father might graciously receive him and the faithful people so that this sacrifice might be made as well as we can make it. The priest will then wash his hands. Clean must the hands be that are to touch, to offer, and are to dispense that holy, spotless victim. The offertory is a reminder that we as Catholics are called to make as many daily offertories as we can. Everything that happens in life should begin with God in mind. Everything that we do should be done for him. And everything that's brought to completion, we should thank God for. If you start thanking God throughout your day, if you start you know, trying to get that spirit of generosity in your own lives for everything God has done for you, then your entire life will be transformed into an offering to God. The orate or the pray brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours is next. This acknowledges that the Eucharist is the sacrifice of the whole church. It's not exclusively the priest's sacrifice, you know, priest is in the driver's seat because of anointed and consecrated hands, but it's the property of the faithful too. And the priest offers the sacrifice in the name of the faithful for their benefit. It's why we take mass intentions. Thus, the priest and the faithful are bound together in that sacrifice, but we're also bound together by sacrifice itself. So in the bread and wine that's about to be transformed, yes, but also in ourselves being here together, present at mass, we are also bound together. As St. Gregory the Great put it, the mass will be a sacrifice for us to God when we have made an offering of ourselves. We share in Christ's sacrifice 
And we are truly joined as one true church on earth when we make it that offering and we do it well. So the bread and wine have been offered, the sacrifice has begun, and now it's time to get yourselves in gear for the sacrifice to be completed. Once again, we hear that the Lord be with you. And once again, it's that heavenly greeting. But the next part might sound a little strange, that part where, you know, lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. It might sound a little funny because we don't really use that language on a regular basis. You know, it's really more of a, a military command to get yourselves ready for the next part of Mass. As is, if the priest is the drill instructor, and he's saying, hearts up. Uh, and, you can, and this is so you can pray the rest of the Mass without distraction, so that our one focus will be on the Lord in heaven. And when we make this sacrifice, you know, we then give thanks after we do that. Uh, because that's how Jesus began his passion at the Last Supper, by giving thanks to the Father. And this is where, you know, the, the sacrifice of the Mass is imminent. We know that it's coming and it's almost here. And so we get ourselves ready, just as the disciples did for the Last Supper. The prayer before communion begins the preparation for consecration. The petitions in that prayer refer to the gifts that have been prepared for sacrifice that is about to take place. And they follow the same theme as the collect at the beginning of Mass and the post-communion prayer right after communion's over with. The Sanctus, 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 or the Holy, 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 is the last prayer that we pray before the Eucharistic prayer. You know, with our hearts having been lifted up to heaven, and our hearts, they're now alongside the angels in heaven, so we can pray the same prayer that the angels in heaven say to praise God. It's pretty incredible stuff. You know, it's that prayer that comes out of the book of Revelation where the angels are before the throne of God and they say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. And we say holy, holy, holy because of how we translate from the Hebrew. Now in English, we have comparative and superlative adjectives. Uh, you know, we'd say if someone's holier than someone else, we would say that they're holier, right? Um, and when we talk about everyone, we'd use a superlative. You know, this guy, he's the holiest, or God is the holiest of all. Um, Hebrew doesn't have that. Uh, you know, if you want to say John is holy, then a direct translation would be, you know, John is holy. If Sue is holier than John, Sue would be holy, holy. And if you had, you know, Jack, who's the holiest of the three, you would say Jack is holy, holy, holy. Uh, that is if you wanted, once again, that literal translation. And the Mass, we've kept this translation a little more literal because of, firstly, how old the prayer is. You know, it was prayed that way for such a long time. And secondly, because of its dignity. It's a prayer given to us by the angels themselves. And, and the Hebrew has been the closest to it that we've had. So why not try to keep that? Because when we do keep that, when we are true to our, our roots, then we can enter into that mystery a little bit more. We can understand what's going on, but at the same time realize that, you know, we can't wrap our minds completely around this, that there's still something left that we can always think about, meditate on, and try to comprehend. The last part of the Sanctus is, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And you should recognize this from Palm Sunday. Uh, it's what the Israelites were saying as Christ entered Jerusalem and was given a kingly welcome. With the Eucharist being imminent, being the very next thing, we know that Christ is almost here, and we should sing together to welcome the King of Glory into our midst and into our hearts. So as we end that preparation of gifts, we need to give Christ a kingly welcome into our hearts and make our hearts ready to receive him so that we can receive the Eucharist as best we can. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathering our prayers and petitions into one, we now offer them to our Heavenly Father. Our response, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who work to pro produce our food, that they may be paid a just wage and treated humanly, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the respect of human dignity at every stage of life, we pray to the Lord. For those prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for all who have died, especially Raymond Mascardrelli, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Heavenly Father, look upon the needs we have placed before you and answer them all according to your most holy will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries, 
which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. petition through Jesus Christ your Son our Lord that you accept and bless these gifts these offerings these holy and unblemished sacrifices which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church be pleased to grant her peace to guard unite and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith remember Lord your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this chalice in, precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this in memory of me. Mysterium fidei. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven, of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant to them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us to beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. through him and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Holy Spirit. We may offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, just a few announcements. Uh, today at 1 p.m. we're going to have the blessing of animals right here out uh, in front of the church. Um, you know, whether they have uh, fur, uh, feathers, or scales, uh, bring them out. Just make sure that they don't eat someone else's animal. And then uh, the rosary, there's going to be a town-wide rosary on Saturday uh, in front of Holy Trinity Church at noon. Um, so it'd be great if we could have a good showing, uh, be outside, keep our space, all that, um, but just be a good presence and, you know, be able to pray for our country uh, during this month of the rosary. And also I have uh, my topic for the end of the month. It's going to be ghosts and fallen angels. I was going to call it haunted houses and demons, but a little too cliche. Uh, so... Ghosts and Angels, uh, 7 p.m., Lower Church, on the 27th of October. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.